This is a garage in Lithuania where volunteers are working around the clock to turn ordinary cars into battle-ready vehicles for Ukrainian soldiers to use on the front lines against Russian invaders. Now, here's how it works. The cars are bought from or donated by civilians looking to aid the Ukrainian people in any way that they can. Volunteers check the engines retrofit them with armored plating and give them a new coat of green paint so that they're not going to stand out on the battlefield. The vehicles are then piled up and driven south as fast as they can through Lithuania and Poland to a secure checkpoint on the Ukrainian border. So if someone asks you what a trucker convoy for freedom looks like, please show them this picture. Now, one reason we know about this Ukrainian armored truck pipeline is thanks to incredible new reporting by The Washington Post's Steve Hendricks, exploring how critical supplies are making their way to Ukraine from supportive neighboring countries. It's not just cars. These convoys are carrying all kinds of emergency supplies to Ukrainian soldiers on the front line, everything from generators and mobile kitchen units to surveillance drones and night vision gear. The most important equipment making its way over the border, bulletproof vests and helmets to protect Ukrainian fighters from Russian bullets. Now, once the supplies reach Ukraine, the mission quickly shifts from urgent to perilous. Today, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov declared that anything carrying military supplies in Ukraine will be considered legitimate targets for Russian strikes. But Ukrainians seem to be willing to take the risk to get the supplies that they need. As one Ukrainian lieutenant told The Washington Post, quote, from the army, we get the gun and the ammunition and the uniform. But under the uniform, what we eat, what keeps us safe, how we move around and fight, that comes from the people our people and foreign people, end quote. Joining us now is the Washington Post Jerusalem Bureau Chief Steve Hendricks, who's the lead byline on this story. What do they make of the idea that Sergei Lavrov said it today, but uh, Vladimir Putin has said it many times, anybody basically helping the Ukrainian military is considered a legitimate target? Well, I think they have mixed feelings. One is this is... This is not a secret process. The, the location of some of the steps along the way, they want to keep as quiet as possible, although they're fully aware that Russia knows what's going on in many cases. But the process itself, these are public uh, campaigns. They need public support. That's why they gave us permission to let us embed with the process from beginning to end and for this particular story. Uh, they're taking a risk, and they know it. But I think the risk, as they perceive it, isn't so much in, in Lithuania or transporting through Poland or even on the Polish border where the where the supplies are handed off. But it's once they, the, the soldiers begin taking them back to their battlefield positions in Ukraine. And we talked to several people uh, this week for this story who had driven 11, 12, 15, 16 hours from the east of Ukraine to pick up these supplies. We're turning around again to get back. Um, and a couple of the guys suggested to me that this is the least dangerous part of their lives these days. It's when they get back that they feel like they are in a pretty constant peril. The governments of Lithuania and Poland, by the way, the, the two places through which these convoys come, are in fact the, the strongest NATO partners in terms of wanting to push back on, on Russia. They are, uh, these are governments and people who are actually worried about Russian expansion. But what you're describing here are yeah. civilian efforts, not, not governmental efforts. Yeah, but the impulse is the same. The people, the citizens of Lithuania that I talk to feel like the Ukrainian fighters are fighting a defensive battle for Lithuania as well as for Ukraine. They, uh, they are members of NATO. They know they are protected by Article 5 and the NATO shield. But um, especially people who, who lived in the Soviet era uh, can only imagine what um, Russia and Vladimir Putin have in mine for countries like Lithuania, a tiny Baltic country right on Russia's uh, shadow, if he prevails in Ukraine. So they see this as their fight. And uh, I was very moved and very impressed by the depth of support, the flags that are everywhere, the restaurants that are raising money, giving portions of their support. I happened to be there during Lithuania's own Independence Day recently when they, when they did shed the Soviet uh, cloak. And there were as many Ukrainian flags on display as Lithuanian flags. Uh, they really do see this as their fight. 